All right, here we're going to go over how to do logistic regression. So I have the logistic regression file pulled up uh, with cured, 0 to 1, intervention, 0 to 1, and duration. If you want to look at what those mean, we can skip from values to labels. And there we can see cured is either not cured or cured, and intervention is no treatment or treatment. So that is how we've coded everything. So everything in logistic regression, if it's a dichotomous variable, has to be listed as either 0 or 1. So we'll go ahead and say analyze regression. We're going to do a binary logistic. Our dependent variable is obviously whether or not uh, we can cure people with intervention. And we'll add our covariates as intervention and number of days with problem before treatment or duration as covariates. We also want to do a combination of, we could have intervention um, interacting with the duration, so we'll also like to do A times B, which gives us the combination of the two effects adding on there as well. Um, again, similar to Multiple regression, we have the forced entry mode, which is a hierarchy because we are doing it in blocks. Um, here we're just going to use entry. Um, actually, we're going to use the forward LR just to kind of show what the stepwise output looks like. But in general, what you would want to do is go ahead and use the entry level. Uh, another name for this I forgot to mention is called the interaction effect. So it's the effect of two or more variables in combination on the outcome. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to categorical. What do we want to see in categorical? Um, we need to identify which of these two covariates is our categorical covariate, if we have any. Intervention is our categorical covariate. Um, the indicator, what the original um, element was coded into as a dummy variable. So is an indicator and the reference category is first. Um, so the control category is always not cured. So zero is not cured. So that means it is first. Zero comes before one. Right, and that's pretty much here. The next one is under the save. What we want to look at here, we want to see our predicted probabilities. Sure, we do. We want to see our predicted probabilities. We want to see our group membership. Uh, we want to see any influence values, if we have any. Uh, standardized, standardized residuals. Yes, we want to see the covariance matrix. And that's pretty much all we really want to see. Under options, uh, we obviously want to see our classification plots, um, the goodness of fit. That will give us our chi squared. It's nice to see our confidence intervals. Uh, if you want to see the iteration history, but it's going to show you potentially a lot. You want to show see any outliers you could do the case-wise listings of residuals outside of two standard deviations we want to display the information at each step not just at the last step so at each step uh, probability for entry 0 0.05 we can also say removal 0 0.05 if we want to uh, we don't have a large data set, so we don't have to conserve memory. And we do want to include a constant in the model. Style is just what you want it to look like, so you don't need to worry about that. And pretty much that's it. And you're going to say OK. And we will talk about all of these um, at a later date here in a few moments.